Okay, we're gonna start this operation. What were you both? Uh, what was your both? Wait, what? Wait, what was your date of birth? Eight twenty two, nineteen forty seven. And puppy is uh, two twenty second, nineteen forty six. Okay, your current age. I'm seventy one, and puppy is seventy three. To be 73 next year. Okay. 73? 72 right now. Um, your birthplace? Karachi. Both of us were born in Karachi, Pakistan. Okay. Where did you live in Pakistan? Karachi, I just put Karachi. Yeah. I lived in Cincinnati town, and your f and Poppy lived in, in Southern. Southern. Southern? Yeah, S A D D A R. Whoa. It's like Plano. Um, when did you travel to America? 1977. December 77. When did you two meet? Uh, when did you meet? We met at a Sodality picnic. Sodality is a um, group of um, young adults, mm -hmm. uh, like a church group. Um, and you went on picnics and stuff like that. And um, I had gone with a girlfriend of mine from, you know, different parishes, different areas. And um, a puppy was, he came from a different area, whatever. And uh, we met at the beach and um, my friend and I were sitting and reading a book and uh, <clears throat> he went by and threw sand at us, <laughs> instigator. So we got up and chased him and threw sand back at him. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, I was 23. I was 24. Yeah. 24. <clears throat> then we started talking and then we, we talked all the way on the bus coming back. Mm. Then he asked me. Yeah, and then she wanted to sit next to me, so I said, no, not now. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, um, who proposed to who? I proposed to her. Is that, is that how it works? Am I, am I lost? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm just making sure yeah. I'm lost. No. Just making in, sure. in those days, for sure, the, it was the guy proposed the mm. How did he do it? How did I do? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I had to go to her parents first. First, he, oh, yeah, he yeah. came and asked my mom. Parents, you know. But I wait, met wait, her. Wait, where, where did you do it at? Like, did you, do it? you did it here in America, correct? No, in Karachi. No. Karachi, Karachi, Karachi yeah. But uh, I had to go to her parents. I mean, although I knew her parents, but I had to go and, and I was shivering. Officially, really. yeah. Okay. To, very to nervous. Very nervous. Yeah, he was nervous. I was with us for a little while, but I was still nervous to go and... How long were you dating before you asked her? Uh, six months? <coughs> One year? Let's see, probably seven. When did we meet? 69? 70? 70. 70. So it's almost a year. A year. A year. Just. Mm, only mm. about us. Oh, yes. Here's a picture of... Um, isn't that the one over there? No. Yeah, this is my father, my mother, my father's brother, sister, sister, and um, my cousins. My cousin, his wife, another cousin. That's me and <laughs> Jerry. This is our engagement picture, I think. They were all over. Mm. Um, were all your kids born before you arrived to America? Yes, yes we, got, we got married in 72, in April, April 16th, 1972. And um, uh, Sharon, Sharon was born in uh, January, January yes, 77. 73. Sorry, 70, <laughs> 73. January. And then Uncle AJ was born in December 23rd, 1974. And Uncle Robin was born uh, May 28th, 1976. Sure. And in 77, um, no, 76, yeah, 77 January 
we came to the United States on a holiday and uh, we stayed with Uncle Derek and my, my parents were already, uh, they had come on a vacation. And um, uh, Uncle Derek said, <clears throat> would you like to stay, you know, immigrate to this country and um, we, said fine. we said fine, we'd like to. And Uncle, <clears throat> and he asked my parents of course first and they said, well, all this time I've had um, my daughter with us and we haven't had you with us because he was over here. So we'd li I'd like to have both of them in one place, both my children in one place. So we said, yeah, we don't mind, we'd like to migrate because at that time in Karachi, they, were nas they had nationalized all the schools and all the subjects were in Urdu, which was the national language. And we had a hard time learning Urdu ourselves because it was compulsory. You had to do English and Urdu. And uh, we'd never be able to do geography in Urdu and science in Urdu. If you, you could barely do Urdu as a language without it being a subject in a lang different language. Mm -hmm. And I said, if we don't understand it and we can't, it'll be difficult for us to teach our children. <coughs> How will we teach them, you know? How would we help them? It would be very difficult. So yes, we would like to immigrate to the United States. So my brother put in papers for us in March of 77. And we got our visas in October of 77, which was really fast in those days. So, and so it was really good. So then we sold our house and all the stuff. And um, came over here uh, December 4th, 1977. We mm -hmm. came to the States. Yes. And um, Sharon was barely five, nearly five. <clears throat> and then AJ was three and Robin was one and a half. <laughs> and so they were all little, three under. All right. <clears throat> so what was childhood like, like living in Karachi? It was very nice. It was um, really good. Much, much better because we moved with everybody. Everyone, Muslim, Christian, Catholic. It didn't matter who you were, what religion, whatever. Your neighbors. Were your neighbors. Your we all got people. together. We all played, you know, all the games we used to play. And it was so, so like togetherness, you know. It was really this thing. It was very exciting. They used to play on the street. We used to play on the streets, you know. And, you know. <laughs> and they'd and block we, off the street and they'd play. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Chor police. Chor, you know, police. <laughs> Chor police is robbers and cops and robbers. Cops and robbers. Yeah. And so and you so had we used to play sides. on the street. We used to block the street up and we, everybody, all the guys, girls, everybody would just mix and we would just chase each other and, you know, and have good fun. It, it was really good. I mean, what was school like over there? Fantastic. <coughs> I mean, a school was like not a, We had boys in one section, and the other side of the thing was girls. Mm. So we had girls and boys separate. A separate schools. Separate no, schools, totally. Not co-educated. Not no, a no mix, co uh, you know. And it was, it was really good. You know, you go from one building to another building after you finish one, you know, like kindergarten and like we have over here. But uh, you go to uh, another building to um, for the higher, higher classes. Class. I mean, would you say that like the school over there would have prepared you for life in America? Well, we didn't think it of that. The, it was very mm -hmm. strong. Not re I don't know about prepared us for America. It prepared us for life because for life. Um, we, we, the education standard was pretty high for English and math and things that you really need in life, you know. So we were good in that, yes. And then uh, what was like the livelihood of, you know, living at home and everything? Yeah, uh, people, uh, kids never moved out as such, you know, until you got married. Uh, so there was no thing of living in an apartment by yourself or, you know, you never, you never did. That's just not the way of life there. Mm -hmm. But, um, you lived at home, 
and uh, you ate with your parents and whatever. And we always sat at the table. <coughs> all and sat we all at the ate table together. And, and there used to be yes. a lot of sing song. Like after dinner, everyone would uh, sing and you know different songs. Each one had, and for parties, birthday parties and all. We would always Each sing. one would take their turn always. to sing. Yeah. Singing was a great thing there, was a big thing there. <laughs> you always sang all these songs, yeah. you know. Starting from the oldest to the youngest, everyone would sing, sing. you know. But, and each one had their own uh, song that they really liked and knew. And then you and, get on um, with them and then you start singing. And then them. everyone would sing we together and that kind of thing. Right, and then... Uh... What about siblings, living with siblings? Because I know, Poppy, you had a lot of siblings. Yeah, I had uh, three brothers and three sisters. I mean, that's including me. Mm -hmm. Three brothers and three sisters. <clears throat> so, would you say that you enjoyed living with that many people? Oh, yes, yes. We had a, we had a, quite a big house. Mm -hmm. And we would all sleep on the floor. We, we had only one bed. But, <clears throat> and we would all sleep on floors. And, you know, we, all together. I mean, you know, one, each one was separate and... And it was really togetherness. That's what the best part. No thing of, you know, oh, no, you can't and whatever. You know. But it was really good. Yeah. And what about you, Grandma? How was it living with uh, Uncle Derek and everything? Yeah, we, we both had... Um, it, it's strange. We don't have separate bedrooms there. So in our house, where we grew up, where I grew up, there was one big bedroom, and the beds were like back-to-back. So there was this big, like a king bed, and our heads would be back to back. The, 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 the beds would be, you know, their heads to our heads. So they are facing, they are facing away from each other, but we were all in the same room. Yeah. This is Uncle Derek and me. So where did you guys first move? from uh, when you guys came from Karachi? Yeah, we, no, we, we... We came here, we stayed, we stayed in Garland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because my brother was in Garland. Uh, he had a house there. So we found an apartment close by and uh, <clears throat> we stayed in the apartment for six months. With the three children. Uh, with three, yeah, and my mother and father. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> in that six months, we looked for a house and we wanted a house close to a school so that when we went to work, at least, you know, the kids could just walk across to mm -hmm. the school. So we found this house. So we found this house and we're still living in it. Mm -hmm. Came here. This is what it looked like before we planted all the trees. Mm -hmm. And here are the three bubbles. And so how long have we been living in this house? Since 78. Oh my gosh. And then, uh, I know, Poppy, you were talking about Pan American, but what was the first job you guys got when you first moved here? No, here, here I worked for Tom Tom. No. no. We worked for a restaurant. We worked, our first job here was, was at Rice Bowl Restaurant. The Chinese restaurant. Chinese restaurant. Uh, on Parker and um, Independence. Independence. The other side of Tom Tom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. across the road there. Yeah. So and, we were um, waiter and waitress. Then. We worked as waiter and waitress. Now we had never done waiter and waitress in our lives because you don't work as a waiter yeah. in Karachi. But um, we needed a job that we could both go and come because I didn't know to drive and he knew to drive. So he, we had, could go together and come together and make enough money to live at least. Mm -hmm. So we kept all our tips and we worked from morning from 11 in the morning to 11 at night, mm -hmm. straight through at Four the restaurant weeks. and then come home. Yeah. And they'd give us dinner and lunch and everything there. Yeah. And then, um, would you guys ever think about moving out of this house or, or had you guys ever thought about moving out? We did at one time um, as our children grew, uh, but they did not want to move from their schools and their friends. Mm -hmm. We tried very hard we were trying to get another house you know a bigger house or whatever but it didn't work out because <laughs> they were very upset 
Very as a no, no, we, we don't the, want to leave our school. We did the addition the just to. Mm-hmm. So then we added on to this house. We said, okay, then in that case, let's add on to the house. So we added on this dining room and bedroom and bathroom. And we constantly did things to the house, you know, to make it look decent, you mm-hmm. know, didn't let it run down kind of thing. Yeah, Take like the a, carpets yeah. and then one thing at a time. First we did... Um, we did paneling in the, we, we converted the garage into a bedroom we. and the bathroom. Yeah, we had never done anything We like never that. done anything like that. Of course, the plumbing part and all, we got a plumber Electricity and plumbing and electricity. was done by somebody else. We didn't know anything. But uh, we did the paneling and stuff and we had never done in our life, but it was very, we, you can learn, you know, they, mm. they show you in the store what to do and it's simple. And then he was good with the saw and whatever, and we and did nail it. it. And we would yeah. put our belt with all the hammers and things. <laughs> yeah. And we did it. It took six months almost. I mean, we saved a lot of money. Yeah. Really, we saved a lot of money by doing it ourselves. It took our time. And there then we no could rush. then separate, give Sharon her own room, and then AJ and Rob were in one room. Because then the Rob said he wanted then, to go in the then, garage, um, and we got a bed there. Then as they grew older, then gave him a room, separate room, and then the three of them had their own room. We, yeah, and when we, we did did this, this bedroom, bedroom yeah, <coughs> and then they had their own rooms there. And my parents had always had the master. And then uh, what were some of your favorite memories from oh. after moving to America? The first thing we, we couldn't believe over here was running water, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, in, in Karachi, you had to pump the water, and they only pumped water twice a day, some, sometimes uh, only once a day. I don't know what pump, but they... they pump the water, yeah. the electric pumps. Electric to, yeah, get, the to get the water the pressure the of the water. We lived like in apartments, but they were like... Ownership apartment, mm-hmm. apartments. And um, you, we were on the f- first floor. Not the ground floor, but the first. first mm-hmm. we, they call it ground floor, and then first floor, second floor, third floor. So it, it was so nice of the, to have running hot and cold oh, water <laughs> and to be able to take a shower without having to do the, we had a water, hot water heater called a geezer. And um, you, that was electric, so you'd get hot water and you could have, a, you'd fill wa- hot water in a bucket and then add cold water, mix it up. And then up, take the shower. Take, take, no shower. No, no and then you'd, buckets I know, water and of just water to take a shower <laughs> it was hard really back home it but was it hard was good. It but was it not was fine bad. it wasn't you know? bad it, you, was it just bad. depends where you live and what you're going to get and what mm-hmm. you you want is quite totally different from what you get mm-hmm. yeah so you can want the world but you can't get it but you, mm-hmm. you know it's it's totally different yeah. it was hard so, what were some common jobs in Karachi? Uh, for, for girls, it definitely was being Sick. a secretary. Mm-hmm. And they were very well paid jobs. And I liked, uh, that's what I always wanted to be. I wanted to be a secretary. <laughs> and I did. So, I had a very good job, very, very nice boss at Burma Shell. Uh, I, before that, I worked at an uh, insurance company called uh, Ideal Life Insurance Company. And then after that, I got this other job in Burma Shell, and I was there for uh, not too long, I guess, a few years, 10 years maybe, 10 years, whatever. And what were some common jobs for uh, I boys? I worked in an envelope factory. Mm-hmm. How to make envelopes and, you know, we had to test the thing, see that it's too much glue and all that stuff, and, and you know, I had to check everything, see that it's right. You know, that was very good, really good job. And then after that, that after that, that, that that's when we got, before yeah. we got married. And yeah. Then you got this job in in Pan Am. Pan Am, I got after that. Mm-hmm. I got the job in Pan American, and then I was there for some time till we decided to, Come because they were cutting down. Mm-hmm. All airlines were, you know, trying to cut each other. Mm-hmm. by giving free flights to this airline, we, fr- we couldn't do it, Pan American couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. So they said they just sent a letter to everybody, 
uh, we are, have to cut down staff, whatever, uh, lay off or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you'll decide what you'll want to do. So when I got it, I had to, we had to talk and say what to do. And so we had already come to Texas, we had already gone, you know, to so Canada. So we decided... Canada had two brothers, so we went there, came here, but we were here most often, so... Mm -hmm. No, you know. the thing is, uh, Canada has always been very cold, mm -hmm. and we in Karachi, it doesn't never get, get cold. that cold. You know, it's it's, it's like Texas weather. It's hot very today. much like Texas weather, yeah. and not even as cold as Texas, <laughs> and mm -hmm. and definitely hotter. But it does get hot here too. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. we didn't really want to go to Canada because. For one thing, because of the cold to start mm -hmm. with, and there were so many people there from Karachi already. Uh, but you still had to have someone to sponsor you to come to another mm -hmm. country. You just couldn't go otherwise. So since my brother was here, we decided to come here. Okay. And this is like Karachi weather, so it was fine with us. Yeah. We didn't. It didn't matter. Yeah. We were really happy that okay, make up a mind, just it. So. And it's a good thing, you know, we came when we were young, like, I um, must have been 29 or 28 when, it, when I came, when we came. And um, we could do the jobs that we did because we were young, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we could make ends meet, meet with whatever we had because it, we all started at like, minimum wage. I want a Porsche you know? or I want a Mercedes Benz or, and you know. For us it was the no. comfort of just having a car. Mm -hmm. A car, And we always just bought a new car, we never bought second hand cars. Mm -hmm. Because a car is going to be used for a long time. Till you know, mm -hmm. for everything. It's not just, is to go to work, come back, go to the grocery store, whatever mm -hmm. it is. So you needed a dependable car so you could go to work. Mm -hmm. So we, we said this is something that's going to be used a long time. So you need to get a good car, you know, something that's going to last. So we bought a new car, mm -hmm. did the down payment, did the, you know, payments per mm -hmm. month and all that stuff. Yeah. And we only had one car mm -hmm. and I didn't know to drive. So I had to learn to drive. That was, a, that was <laughs> fun. <laughs> because you know, we were, we were going to the, working at the restaurant from 11 to 11, mm -hmm. and you're tired, you where's the time to learn? Yeah. Okay, so at weekends and whatever. Then after that, we got other jobs or whatever, and I started working here. Um, uh, oh, I worked at Arby's, roast beef. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we and both worked at Arby's. You know how I got this job mm -hmm. in Burma, Robinson? Mm -hmm. You know? I, I do, I, I don't. It's, Okay, so let me tell you, this was fun. So I was at Arby's, working at Arby's, and I was in the drive through window, drive -thru. uh, like, <laughs> like uh, at like 3 o'clock, 3, 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the evening, mm -hmm. 4, 4.30, whatever. And uh, this car would come by with um, uh, Brad Robinson. Mm -hmm. he, was a, he was only 12 well, years old at that well, time. Yeah. <laughs> and um, his mother, and he had gone for tuitions. And on the way back, she would stop by with him to get him a sandwich. So when I'd be at the drive through window, they'd say, oh, you have a lovely accent, where are you from? And i say, I'm from Pakistan. And uh, uh, oh, how are you doing? And all this thing, and what were you? And I, we chat, and I told her, tell her, I told her I was a, I'm a secretary, but uh, I don't know to drive, so my husband has to bring me and take me. So I have to be <laughs> the place that he can you know, drop me off and pick me up and all that stuff. So we talked and every time they'd come by, they'd call me by my name and all this thing. And so one day she came into the, into Arby's and she said, give me her, you know, the deposit slip from your mm -hmm. checkbook. She gave that to me and she said, call me tonight. And she said, my husband, and so I did. And uh, she said, um, my husband, George has a, uh, uh, office in Richardson, and this Arby's was in Richardson. Mm -hmm. um, would you like to come? He needs a secretary. His secretary, who he's, who he's had for a long time, is leaving, and uh, he needs a secretary, and he thought you'd be perfect, you know, kind of thing. Why don't you come and meet him? So mm -hmm. I said, sure. So we went and met him. Jerry went with me, 
and uh, because we used to go put skylights after mm -hmm. he used to work at a place to make skylights and so in the evenings to get extra money we'd install the skylights mm -hmm. so his boss would pay us ten dollars for each skylight he installed mm -hmm. so we put ten he get hundred dollars straight you know that that way anyway so we went uh, and did this interview with Mr. Robinson and he said, okay, when can you start? And I said, I'd like to give them two weeks notice and mm -hmm. then start. Started on $6.50 an hour. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm here ever mm -hmm. since with Robinson. And at, uh, at the uh, waiter and waitress, we were a dollar. 25. A dollar 25 an hour. And we made tips Bukus, mm -hmm. yeah. because they wanted us, is Jerry and Flavie there, and they would come with family, mm -hmm. big family, want Jerry and Flavie, Jerry and Flavie. And then sometimes we would take the child, if they have a little baby, mm -hmm. I would take the child, or she would take it, and look after, they would say, she's quiet, the baby's quiet, let us mm -hmm. eat her. You know, give yeah. them time to eat. They would put money in our, po in our pocket without saying mm -hmm. anything, just put some money in our pocket. That was our tip. 100 mm -hmm. bucks, 20, 50 bucks, and we just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that that time, <laughs> my God, $10 was way, way higher. Now, now, $10, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's different at that time, you know. Yeah. We went through a lot to get to where we are now. Mm -hmm. You know, a dollar, and now you're getting 10, he's getting 10. Right? <laughs> yeah, but you know. Minimum wage has gone. Yeah, up. but what I'm saying is, it was it was really. And then when she got, I used to put skylights, and I would take all of them, the three kids, uh, her At the parents. Weekend, weekend we'd go. Her parents too in the big truck, <laughs> and me driving with her, and then we would go to all these uh, place houses that are to be put skylights, mm -hmm. and there for uh, three children and with the grandparent. They're running around, picking up nails, picking up screwdrivers, screws, and whatever, whatever, running around here. So mm -hmm. this thing, and we would put skylights up, you know. And I really loved it. It was really a lot of money to make, to mm -hmm. go and do, so. So I know you guys said you came from not, uh, not a lot to, you know, where yeah. you are now, comfortable. So what were your parents like? I know, Poppy, you told me about yeah. your mom and everything. Yeah. But what was your mom like? You know, Fantastic. Like? Because she, I, I was only two years old when my father died. Mm -hmm. And I have a younger brother who hasn't seen my father. Mm -hmm. But he was I three haven't, months old. Yeah, he was ten. So I haven't seen my father, but I was only two years old. Mm -hmm. And I was not there when he died, and they had to look for me. Mm -hmm. That story will never... This thing because he they, was there, but he he walked out of the house. He didn't know what house. was happening, With, and he kept walking. And, and he walked, <laughs> they had walked, to go walked find all him. over, and they would mm -hmm. have to send somebody go find him. Where is he? Mm -hmm. You know. And I was in the middle. And then my brother told me, "You were in the middle of a four street stop stop, stop sign stop. with the four cars going up and down, and you're standing right in the middle over there." Well, and the guy right. came and he said. He said, he's right here, and I'm going to get him, and he picked me up and brought me home. <laughs> so, like in the I mean, uh, my parent, my mother looked after all of us, mm -hmm. and we didn't, we didn't have uh, anybody to, you know, whatever money that my father kept for us, we do. Then my sister said, I'm going to get a job. I'll go get a job, my eldest sister. Mm -hmm. And she got a job in the American Express, you know. So she worked there for a long time. She got a job, and... She we was a secretary. To, she was a secretary, so mm. she had to, uh, with her money, we just kept on going and whatever it was. You know. mm. And then after, you know, my sister, other sister, we got, got, became a nun, so she had to leave the house. So slowly, slowly, we all left, you know, for mm -hmm. Canada. The two brothers went to Canada, and I came over here. Mm -hmm. What were your, were your parents like? I know you said they moved over here with you and yeah. moved here. Yeah. For we were very close. Um, my mother was very strict with me when I was growing up. I was not allowed to spend the night at anyone's house. Mm. <laughs> me <No>. too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm always wanting to spend the night at anybody's house. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, she was very protective of me because I guess daughter and whatever. 
Only my brother was allowed to mm -hmm. go, but I was not allowed to go. Mm -hmm. I used to get pretty mad. And uh, they were really after uh, girls were not so much as the boys. Yes. But my parent, my mother, she would mm -hmm. punish us. If it says ten o'clock, come home. You're ten o'clock. You have to be home. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're punished. Punish means you stay out with the cats and the rats. And and lock the door. Lock the door and you're there. Oh, please, oh, please, get me in. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> what do I do? You see. But uh, they, you know, they took care of us in other words. And Grandma, what was it like having your parents live here with you, with all the children and everything? It was nice because uh, when they came from school, my father would sh walk Sharon over to, to school and uh, stand there and bring her back, you know, across the road and all that stuff. And that there was always somebody here when they came from school, you know, so mm -hmm. we didn't have to worry about, you know, babysitting or mm -hmm. someone be there and all that. Mm -hmm. So that was really nice. And then they had the benefit of learning from an older generation, you mm -hmm. know. And Sharon was got very attached to my mother and, and father. Uh, she went around. And all of them. And, um, they were very close mm -hmm. to their grandparents. And then, so what was it like, you know, coming over here with Uncle Derek and everything? Like, what did he do to help? Because I know you said you guys He was here in... already. Mm -hmm. He was here already. He just sponsored us. He mm -hmm. sponsored us. And... Um, uh, what well, do you mean? We just got so a job. So it was job. nice that we had, he helped us, you know, find jobs, mm -hmm. you know, so he could, uh, um, like when, you, when you're in a new country, you don't mm -hmm. know what to do and where to go and uh, so all his contacts of trying to find us a job or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like he took the... Um, probably to uh, Braniff Airlines mm -hmm. to see if they... He could get a job at Braniff. Because when I came from Pan American, and he mm -hmm. got the they, job, but they, they wanted him uh, to move to Col Colorado. Mm -hmm. And uh, we said, we, we just come over here. We don't know anybody. We haven't really got used to life in this mm -hmm. new country. And if we go to Colorado with any, not knowing anybody there, it's not, it'd be difficult, mm -hmm. you know? They so said we, want we you said to no, that won't work for us. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to be a job over here, and it's a good thing he didn't take that job because later Braniff closed down. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but they were paying for everything. They were paying for the to move, to you. move in mm -hmm. there. They were giving you a car. They were giving you everything. Mm -hmm. You know, just to and they said start tomorrow next week, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And I had to wear a new suit because I was looking yeah. going to meet the <laughs> president of Braniff Airlines. <laughs> And I said, I have a new suit. I won't say the other thing, but anyway. A shirt and a underwear. And then, well, I know I meant it. <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, he said you, the, 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 what they wrote, mm. what Pan Am gave me and I presented to them, they said, we need you to next week because mm. you, you've done all this because I used to do a lot of work in Pan American. Mm -hmm. I, you know, worked at the, uh, the baggage and then I went and done cargo, and then I did security. I did all that, you know. Yeah. Bring all the VIPs, like <laughs> Rod Stu, what's his name, uh, Roger Moore. Mm. We couldn't take pictures. Mm. I wish I could. I would have got a picture of Roger Moore coming on the flight. I had to take him in the car to drop him in the VIP lounge. Mm. Yeah, all the real good actors. They were going to Delhi. There was that uh, mm. movie coming out, uh, Octopussy. I think yeah. so. Something. Yeah, that one. Who knows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Roger Moore. Thing. I, I know you're talking about. Yeah, so. Um, I'm questioning. Yes. Who was a boxer in the family? My, pop, my grand, my father. What was his name? Hannibal de Sousa. He was the synth flyweight champion. Just the what? Flyweight. Oh, oh. Synth. Synth. Synth is S I N D. That's the name of the city. Mm -hmm. This is when uh, I was pregnant with okay. <coughs> Robin, the Sharon and AJ. Mm -hmm.
So what was like, what were like, what were holidays like in Karachi? Like, were they the same as they are here? Um, Christmas, yes. Uh, Christmas was the same. Easter, New Year's is always a New Year's Eve dance. Um, there was a Goan association. They had a big hall and you'd have all the dances over there. Very nice. Yeah, it's almost the same. But uh, um, it's like the gems. When we have the gem, they're mm -hmm. all uh, this thing. Everyone mixes yeah. and everyone. Nice. A lot of, um, they used to have plays and people would um, take part in and whatever. So yeah, it was nice. Were there any like traditions that y'all did there? That you don't okay, do? traditions like on Christmas Day, Mm -hmm. What we would all do because you you lived you know we lived down a street, and there were a lot of neighbors and friends and whatever. We the tradition was you made a lot of sweets, different Christmas sweets, like um, something called kalkals and nuris and Christmas cake, and there was always um, almond toffee, uh, toffees yeah. and. That kind of stuff. Milk toffee, you mean. And um, you'd always go on Christmas Day and visit all your neighbors. Really? Yeah. And each house you went to, you you got to eat, they'd offer you their sweets. Mm -hmm. And you'd have a little wine. Mm -hmm. And the wine we used to have was a sweet wine that you drink in the little sharp glasses, mm -hmm. but with the handle, little handle, mm -hmm. it had like that. And... Um, you drink that and you go to the next house and visit them and have their sweets and people would be visiting everyone and you just walk from one to the other. You don't, there was no, there no, transportation no driving to take stuff. You. Just walk. Like, you know, so you drive to your, you walk to your relatives' houses in the neighborhood and you would eat their sweets and whatever. Even the night, there was And no then trouble. you'd come home like at one, two o'clock and then you'd have lunch very late lunch, you know, mm -hmm. and rest. And then uh, and then in the evening, there was always a Christmas dance. Mm -hmm. So you'd go for that, and it was fun. Oh. And you'd do a lot of carol singing. Really? And as young, uh, long, young people, you know, teenagers and all, you'd go carol singing, and it was and They would love fun. to go. They'd say, we're coming, we're coming, we're all up. Big group of people would go carol singing everywhere. Um, what did your house like look like? Like, do the houses there look like like the houses here? Uh, Almost. Not exactly, yeah, but more slightly different. Mm -hmm. more In the sense that uh, the f they always had flooring. The flooring was tiles. Um, you know those speckled tiles. What are they called? Um, or design tiles. Like ceramic tiles, mm -hmm. all ceramic tiles kind of thing, and um, because you get a lot of dust over there, and you'd uh, have to sweep and mop all the time. No vacuum. No vacuuming. No, no carpets. carpets. The carpets would only be rugs, you know, these area rugs, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that's all. That explains all the rugs. <laughs> yeah, the rugs, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So you don't have to vacuum. You just have to sweep. That's all it is. It is sweep and mop, yeah. Um, what were like stores like? I don't know. Like, were they like? I don't know how to. Like, Not as big as these stores here. Mm -hmm. There were stores. Now they have malls big. there, which they never had before. Mm. Um, there'd be all these narrow streets, and there'd be little shops all over. I think Israel was a nice place we for, where we went also. Oh, you were talking about the, all the places we've been to? Yeah, that's right. Okay, <clears throat> so we've been to Australia. Israel. To uh, New Zealand. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Oh, that was an awesome place. That was a very good trip. Jerusalem, all the... You see all the places where Jericho Jesus was born. And uh, mm, all that. All about religious stuff, but it was very, very exciting, very... Ooh, sometimes you're going underground, under the thing, mm -hmm. you know, 
all about religion, you know, <clears> if you know, but they go underground. It was because when we went underground to see all the uh, whatever was going on, what caves and, and all, and we would come up on the church, and our crowd was just going underneath while we came up, mm -hmm. and they were singing songs, all the songs they were singing, the hymns. Uh, hymns and all. As we came up, the whole thing was like the church was like an echo, and. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. There was this it one, was there was so this one church who's that singing had this? really great ac acoustics. Very great. Beautiful oh. acoustics. It was so, it, it was, was like... It was a very plain church in the sense that it had no, uh, um, you know, no, embellishments and... No speakers or something that. where you're speaking. But it's it was built in such a way that the acoustics was wonderful. Really? And so I really any singing in there sounded beautiful it was so like really a nice. you know the music is coming from somewhere but you're singing and all the extra extras were there was no band no nothing people are saying i'm saying hello where is it coming from and that one said oh they're singing they're coming up too it was that was the best <laughs> oh my gosh um and then um where have you guys traveled? I know you guys love taking trips in <laughs> Australia, yes. Yes. Holy yeah. Land, but what were your favorites and like what were the best places to travel in your opinion? Australia was the best place. Australia it was, was beautiful. Because really nice. there were um, so many friends and they always greeted us, they always was there for us and, and you haven't seen them for so many years. And, like, and it was like you would just, just saw them, see you them, know? you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was, was so like time had not passed because you were still on the same page kind yeah. of thing. That was really nice. And I met a friend who I was uh, like a family to them. There were 13 children. 13 children. And I was the 14th. And I was with them all my life. You know, all the time I would come from work. I would go to the house and the parents would make food. For, oh, Jerry's here. And, you know, they would, you know make food and keep and everybody would all together 13 children plus 13 children plus of uh the family members they were like uh the family was divided and the whole house was divided into each each uh, family you know but it was really there was nice. a lot of family style living there Very it, you know like our family house it was huge i'll show you a picture I'll show you a picture of the family house. And we lived in part of it. It was divided into three parts because there were three brothers, actually five brothers, but two were out of the country. So only uh, three brothers were living in the house. And so, should be in this one. Well, Grandma looks for that picture. Poppy, what were some other uh, places that you loved visiting? Well, Australia was one, mm -hmm. and um, one Canada. One. Canada was another one because I have two brothers there, so it was nice to see them and stay with them. And you know, it was uh, Australia. I had the family there, and we. I used to work for Pan American, mm -hmm. and she used to work uh, for Pakistan Burma Show, and her friend, and my boss for husband and wife. So she, he said, you, you know, you want a job in Pan American? I said, yeah, sure. So he got me a job in Pan American and her wife was working with her for so many years. So we worked so much this is, that this is the being in Pan American and Airlines, one, one side. we got free tickets to go, come to Texas, go back, come back again. Then I would come back, pick them up, take them back home. And then her parents wanted to come. So, you know, we got all that. That was a real big um, break or, you know, it was a great thing for us, you know. We saved a lot of money and, you know, tried coming. Yeah. What, I think, just one more question is, what is your favorite memory from Pakistan? Just like from living there and like your whole childhood and everything. 
playing with friends, people who we, you know, all of us get everyone knew everyone. There was everyone. no phoning and saying, "Can we come over?" You just stopped by yeah, and, came. and saw there people. There was that togetherness. You went over to anyone's house. They always and they always offered. They you always something. offered you something to. No eat. matter what you are, no matter uh, what religion, some snack no matter what. or something. They always give you something to drink, even if it was like lemonade. You know, it didn't have to be alcoholic. It, you know, like lemonade on a hot day was wonderful. That kind of thing. Mm. But it was uh, that togetherness, that everybody got together. We and then played when together. You went to, when you went to church, when you came out, you met everybody and you, you talked and, you know, mm. with everybody. Because everybody knew everybody. And we walked. No and cars. everywhere you went, you walked. You walked. Walked and walked and walked mm. and walked. You walked to church, you walked to school, <laughs> you walked back and everything. And any more questions, Jackie? Me? No. No, good. Is there anything else you'd like to like say or talk about? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty neat, yeah. Um, we're, we're very glad that we had that experience of coming here and being able to give you all this experience of um, uh, this country and how wonderful it is. And you can do anything you put your mind to in this country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank